Hey, Ape Scholars, it's Mr. Smeeds, and I have a question for you today. How many $100 bills would it take to equal the value of all the world's wetland ecosystems combined? If you're ready to think like a mountain, let's get started. So before we figure out how to put a price tag on all of the world's wetland ecosystems combined, we have to review why ecosystems actually have value to humans in the first place. Ecosystems provide a ton of different financial services that we call ecosystem services. Another way to think about this is that ecosystems can do things that help us make money or save money. In this video, we'll take a look at the four main categories of ecosystem services and explore a few examples of each. The first category of ecosystem services is provisioning services, which are things that ecosystems provide directly to us that we can harvest and sell or use ourselves. So wetland ecosystems may provide humans with fish or other animal species that we like to hunt, which means a lower grocery bill. And ecosystems like forests provide wood and other raw materials that can be used to make the pencil you're writing with right now. For a real world example of provisioning services, we can take a look at the palm oil fields of Indonesia. A 2020 study done by Australian and Indonesian researchers found that one hectare of this land produced over $4,000 in provisioning services. Now this comes from farmers harvesting the palm oil or harvesting wood and selling it to make a living. Another type of ecosystem service is a regulating service, which basically just means that ecosystems regulate the temperature and the climate conditions that make life on earth possible. This could be trees sequestering carbon dioxide and lessening the expensive effects of climate change, or it could be coastal wetlands in Florida absorbing excess stormwater and lessening the property damage that surrounding homeowners suffer. Now these regulating services are a little bit harder to grasp because they don't put money directly into our pockets the way provisioning services do. Instead, they save us money by reducing the cost we have to pay to repair damage from unstable environmental conditions. A 2008 study done by the EPA found that coastal wetland ecosystems in Florida provided over $8,000 per hectare in storm protection value. Third category of ecosystem services is supporting services. Think of these as things that ecosystems do that support financially valuable human actions. So bees and other pollinators support farmers by helping pollinate their crops and increasing their yields or their revenue. Wetland ecosystems filter pollutants out of water, which recharges our aquifers with clean groundwater, which means we have to pay less money to purify that water. In fact, in 2018, New York City paid farmers over a billion dollars to alter their farming practices so that less fertilizer and pesticide ran off into the watersheds that supply the city's drinking water. This might seem like a ton of money, but economists calculated that this actually saved the city from having to build their own $6 billion water treatment system and another 300 to 500 million to run it each year. Now, the final category of ecosystem services is my personal favorite, and that's cultural ecosystem services. This is the money that humans pay because we're just suckers for a great view. So when you go as a tourist to Yellowstone and you pay a fee to get into the park, or when you buy a hunting license from the state DNR, those are great examples of cultural ecosystem services. The money that tourists spend in nearby hotels when they go to visit a park, the check that a wildlife biologist collects from their local university. All of these are examples of the cultural value that ecosystems provide. Now that we've covered the four categories of ecosystem services, we have to talk about something that's much more important than memorizing which services go into which categories. And that's how humans devalue ecosystem services. When we do our human things like driving cars, cutting down mangrove swamps to build resorts or combusting coal for electricity, we degrade ecosystems and that decreases their value. A coastal wetland that's clear cut to build a resort can't provide any value to surrounding homeowners in storm protection. And an estuary habitat that's polluted with motor oil or pesticide runoff can't produce nearly as many fish or fishermen that depend on it for a living, or tourists that depend on it for recreation. That's where we're gonna find those shrimp, my boy! Ha -ha! That's where we'll find them! And this is where we as humans just have to do a better job of thinking like a mountain. Are the profits of the resort really worth more than the storm protection and the cultural ecosystem services provided by that wetland? To answer questions like these, we have to return to the question that I asked at the beginning of this video which is how many $100 bills would it take to equal the value of all of the world's wetland ecosystems combined? Now, the answer to this question is a rough estimate, but a 1997 study published in the Journal of Nature found that that number is $14 trillion per year. That's 140 billion of these. Now, somebody else can make a YouTube video on how many trees you'd have to cut down to make 140 billion Ben Franklins. Thanks for tuning in today and exploring the value of wetlands with me. If you wanna see more AP Environmental Science content, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. As always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.